this is what the government does. The government does 100-year plans. You know, if you take it, it's true as individuals, we may not live that long, but the fact of the matter is, is we do our part, we infect other people with the, with the ideas of freedom, the ideas of protecting your rights. See, I don't, I don't encourage people to attack the government, I encourage people to defend their rights. Okay? And if necessary, sue the government when it tramples on your rights. That's fair and proper. Um, to just blindly attack, that's not good. And uh, so I'm against rebellion, I'm against revolution, but I'm sure for a strong protection of your rights and, and holding them to task, do counterclaims, okay? These people that exceed authority. Now, some people have mentioned RICO. And RICO's nice too, you know, if you can show a pattern of criminal activity, violation of rights. Yeah. Uh, revolution is a term that comes from science. If you to talk about anything to go against what they're doing, it would be revolt. The earth revolves on its axis, and that's a peaceful action, and that comes from science. So what we, if we talk about anything, it would be revolt. Mm -hmm. Well, the, it, that, if you're into word ent etymology, then I would say great. But I don't think that the uh, bureaucrats think in those terms. I think the bureaucrats, you know, and as, as I use the word revolution, uh, that's what they understand. And basically they associate the word violence with the word revolution. Okay? Uh, and so uh, the bottom line is that if it, it, I recommend to everybody that they protect their rights and do it through the courts peacefully. What do I say? What's the motto of the Nitty Gritty Law School? Encouraging the government to obey the law. That's all. That's all I want. If you obey the law, everything would be just fine. Okay? None of us would be in this room, actually, if they obeyed the law. But there are those people, rogue elements within government, that don't obey the law. And that's exactly what kicks us into action. You know, it's an interesting thing about the Japanese, when they took over, I think it was some island in the Philippines, okay? And there were, and it was a fairly large population in that island. And, and they, uh, there were uh, local people who were opposed to the Japanese takeover, and so they tended to, to uh, resist the Japanese in various ways. The Japanese had a simple solution. When you find them, kill them. Okay? But the problem was, is every time they killed one of those guys, two or three of his friends who were up until that time kind of neutral and didn't want to get involved, made them mad. And if for every one they killed, they got two or three more, and it ended up so many people were against them, they, the Japanese could go nowhere with any confidence they were safe, and they eventually had to abandon the project. Sounds like a rock. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay, kind of the question is also... And IRL. Uh, Same thing, yeah. Part of the question is also, what is revolution in this case? Well, and actually, who is, is doing it? Uh, when you think about it, it's really the bureaucrats that are revolting. Yeah, well, um, I guess one way to look at it is that the, the, uh, the members of government apparently have declared their independence from the people. Yeah. That's how it appears to me. But see, I don't think revolution is the, is the proper topic here. You know, I, I believe that, that what we have is we have a common, all of us have a common interest in protecting our rights, and we have a common interest in making sure that those uh, people in government who disobey the law need to be called to task for it. They, they are the ones who should be brought through the legal process and have the, and be taken care of through the courts. That that's our stock and trade here is taking care of the uh, the offenses through the courts. We we do that, and if enough of us do it, and as the word spreads, you inform other people, and as that one of you gets attacked, and you tell your friends, they get mad and they pick up on the spirit. There's a percentage that will will work. Remember this: that in the American Revolution, it was equally divided between those who were pro-king, those who were anti-king, and those who didn't care one way or the other. 
Okay? And out of the people that were anti-king, there were 10% of the anti-kingers that were actually involved in some way overturning the, the king. You understand, 10% of one-third means 3% of the population. It only took 3% of the population to convince them to let go. Okay? So that's what we need to do. With 3% of our population, if we could get 3% of the people out there in the courts attacking, doing countersuits, and when you're attacked, now this is a strategy that I believe in. When I'm attacked, I believe in settling the attack. They want the tax from me, okay, I'll pay it. You want, you give me a ticket, okay, I'll pay it. But I pay it with conditions, okay, without prejudice. That means I'm reserving all my rights. Now, are you happy? Oh yeah, they're happy, okay? You paid your debt to society. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. Okay? Okay, great. I'm glad to know that. Here's the problem. I'm not happy, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I can put my full energy into attacking them in the courts, bringing suit for their wrongdoing. And not only that, they actually took your money, so they perfected their offense. They perfected the crime, okay? Yeah. Now it's no longer excuses. And, and I'll tell you, I know some of these fines they levy seem a little high or whatever they do, but you get that out of the way, do you have any idea what you're going to cost them? Let me tell you something. A, a well-conducted suit at law is going to cost them a good twenty-five to $100,000 to defend. That's usually a lot more than what they're trying to get from you, okay, in terms of traffic tickets or, or taxes or whatever, typically, okay? Now, some are more. Look, these guys are in business. They, they're, they're conducting a government business. And if, if you run their costs up, see, if, if, they, if they can put you in jail, somehow that's money in their pocket. It's not an expense like they claim. They get money. I don't know where it comes from, but they get money. I, uh, yeah. Well, federal, yeah. but the feds also get it from somewhere, okay? Persons in jail, that's an asset of some kind that they can borrow again. So, but if you settle the account and then you're suing them and they're spending money to defend the suit, where's the profit? See, that's what you want to do. The idea is your individual case, win or lose, not important in the big picture. Only important to you personally, and that's fine. You do battle as best you can. But just remember, when you can run their costs up, you're having the real effect. I'm sorry, I kept that, you waiting. No, that's great. Rather than uh, use a lawsuit as um, first resort, wouldn't it be better to notice them that they've caused you injury and present a claim in, in cases that aren't pressing where they don't have you, uh, they're not dragging you into court, maybe the code enforcement man came out or some situation like that, Wouldn't uh, could I have your thoughts on that? Does it reinforce your um, your claim, your position, your, your perception of being fair and just to give well, notice? What I suggest is that you do a notice and demand. Okay? So there you have it. I have uh, one comment, Bill, a couple. Mm, On the subject talk. of revolution, if yes. uh, people were taught that when the uh, war for independence started, it was a revolution. When we won, we won the war for independence. So I have kind of a simple uh, procedure that I deal with. When people call it a revolution, they must be English and think we lost. So get in the habit of calling it a war for independence, and we won. Now the second thing I'd like to bring to your attention is we've got to stop this guy because we're liable to get America back if he continues. If we can bring the common law to our understanding and I'm the hardest guy in the world to make understand, you're going to be looking at Resurrection Day for your country. And we can send the revolutionary Tory bastards back to England again. 
And by the way, they're here. They're here. Yeah. The regulatory uh, agencies are all the Tories. They're still here. But anyway, Bill is teaching something that every one of these uh, CDs that goes out of here, DVDs, whatever they are, should be passed on to your children and grandchildren because you see the reason we're here is this should have been taught when we was in you know junior high at least high school civics they used to teach until until we went to total communism I guess and uh, we'll have to be thankful that Bill is going to be around for a while let me tell you what if they stop this guy's action you know, I mean, they've been known to do that, you know. Uh, it's going to be a cold day in hell before one of us can pick up the pieces where he's at. So the next thing I want to bring to your attention is Bill would like to be doing this maybe every three or four weeks, have another seminar, because we went through two. Uh, the first one was on motion. This one is on uh, sovereignty. And if he can get, ever get support enough to devote his time to this thing, 100% of his time, we would be the recipients of that blessing. So the next time he's due up, I don't care if it's fly shit on the wall, come and hear him. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, well, thank you. I hope I merit all that. Absolutely. But let me, let me tell you another t technique. I just want to sneak this in. Whenever you have, you have legal procedures, statutory, there is sometimes a, a common law equivalent. And when they create the statutory law, they usually build in somewhere into the statutory law a statutory procedure that gives you the common law benefit you're looking for. Now, specifically, what I have in mind here is a, a thing called a list pendant. Whenever you have an interest in a property and you're suing somebody about it, an attorney can file a list pendant on the property. That notifies a future buyer or a future lender that, there's, that this uh, property is at stake. And if there's a lawsuit involved, and they might buy the property, but since it's on public record with a list pendant, they buy it. And whoever loses, then they lose their rights to the property. They lose their money, too. And it goes back to whoever sued for it in the first place, okay? Now, that's the statutory procedure. If you follow the common law procedure, well, let's put it this way. If you go down to the county recorder and try to file a list pendant, so the county recorder say, well, only an attorney can file it, okay? Now, so here you are with your lawsuit, but you can't file it like an attorney could. So... Uh, in one sense, you could say, well, I am the attorney. I'm the attorney of record on my own case, and therefore I should be able to. That, that is an argument you can make. But there's something better. In, in the, either the Civil Code or the Code of Civil Procedure, I forget which it is. I think it's the Civil Code. Section 800 and something. I was looking for it here, but I didn't see it. I thought it was 870. But <clears throat> there is a procedure calling for a notice of preservation of interest. And I think this is the statutory execution of the common law procedure. And what you do in this section, it tells you that the form, how it should be made out. They actually give you instructions on it. And so what you do is you file this form with the, with the county recorder against the property. Let's say you're suing a judge you do a property search through a private investigator. You find out what properties he has. You then put a preservation of interest. And in the preservation of interest, you say that the basis for your interest in the property is this lawsuit against him. That immediately screws up his credit. It immediately screws up his ability to, to sell the property if he wishes to duck out of it. Because whoever buys the property, if you win, they lose. Okay? So keep that in mind. That preservation of interest is a good thing. I, I haven't found it yet, but... Okay. Yes. You have to have a signed court order by... This is the preservation of interest I'm talking okay. about. 
uh, and the preservation of interest, you, you don't have to have no, it? No. You There's just go down and make your declaration. Is there a cover letter? So they, uh, a cover no, sheet? No, no, no cover letters. Just fill out the form. You make it yourself. Actually, you make the form yourself <coughs> on a typewriter, but the, right in the code, it tells you exactly what to put in where on the page. It's, it's something designed for people. Okay? They don't like to brag about it. Okay? Let's see. I'm going to try and... See, I don't... Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Your question. Well, um, actually, I just wanted to share that... Um, my girlfriend who lives in Hawaii, um, one of her best friends is a lawyer. And um, he's Japanese and he has a little tiny Shih Tzu dog, you know. And he named his dog Sosumi. Sosumi, okay. Very good. Right. Uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, right quick, I got a, a thing here called the Notice to the County Clerk uh -huh. about filing anything. It says the minute you receive any affidavit, it is recorded. Should you refuse to record my affidavits once deposited with you, you are committing a crime against justice under statutes at large, section 5403, and it is punishable by up to $2,000 fine and three years imprisonment. Which statutes at large? Uh, statutes at large, section 5403. I don't know yeah, which one. Which, which one? Oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't say. Yeah, you've got the section within this, the, but what, you need a particular statute. Well, it's titled, it's titled LXX, Crimes, Chapter okay. 4, Crimes Against Justice. So it's title, uh, what now is it, L? Code. That's code, see? Oh, that's the code? Okay, but if you have a code section, that works too, because then you can trace the statute. That you and have. it says 5403, every person who willfully destroys or attempts to destroy with an intent to steal or destroy, takes and carries away any record, paper, or proceeding of a court of justice filed or deposited with any clerk or, or officer of such court, or any paper or document or filed record, or deposited in any public office, or with any judicial or public officer shall, without reference to the value of the record, paper, document, or proceeding so taken, pay a fine of not more than $2,000 and suffer imprisonment at hard labor, not more than three years or both. So you got some... Sounds like a deal. Yeah, we got some stuff against them if they refuse to file your paperwork. Okay. Got three minutes here? All right. So next question. Okay, no more questions? Is that the end of the session here? No? I'm still looking, but, you know. Uh, I'm trying to find that, that one that... Uh, okay, I think it's the Civil Code. And I think it's in the 800 series. Uh, <coughs> see if I can find it. <clears throat> All right, we got two minutes of this time, so we're almost finished. Hey, well, Bill's uh, looking for that. Uh, we only have the mic. Let's give him a thank you. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, thank you. I hope. I hope you folks that traveled as far as you did got your money's worth. <clears throat> you know, some of you people cost what? It must have cost you a thousand dollars to get here. Yes, sir. Well, I was, I was just going to ask you to repeat everything. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Do it in three minutes. But I don't. I don't see it in the civil code. Maybe it's the Code of Civil Procedure. Yes. If I can find it real fast. Well, I guess I can't find it that fast. Yeah, it never works. Mm. Huh? No, not that one. But that's a good one to know about. Just remember preservation of interest. And you can, you can go to the California 
legislative info website and and you can find it there you know they you can do a California code search and look for preservation of interest you'll find it okay well okay I guess uh, we're at the official end of the seed of uh, the DVD so uh, you should each get a copy if you stick around long enough so I can make copies and uh, you'll be able to go away with it I'll stick around a bit we have we the uh, the door is closed for coming in at 9 o'clock on the outside, but there's many guests out there, so we can stay and talk a little bit and so forth. Thank you. Okay. Okay.